So binomial probability distributions. These are probability distributions for binomial experiment. All right. So <clears throat> if the following bullet points are um, true about a probability situation, then it is a binomial probability uh, distribution. Uh, we can use a binomial probability distribution to model the situation. Okay. So each trial has two possible outcomes called success or failure. In the previous dice example, or die example, if you got a three, that was a success. If you didn't, that was a failure. Okay, that's it. Success or failure. The probability of success P on each trial is the same. So for our dice roll, the probability of getting a um, three was the same on each roll. The trials are independent, which means one trial does not affect another one. Okay, and that again, that didn't, that was true for all of our dice rolls. <coughs> Excuse me. So that formula for the probability of um, K successes is equal to n choose k. Remember, this is that combination notation. So this means n choose k times p to the k. That's the probability of success raised to the k power times 1 minus p to the n minus k. This 1 minus p, that's the probability of failure. Sometimes that is written as q. To save from having to find a fourth variable, I just leave this as 1 minus p. But if you see q, you're thinking that is the probability of failure. All right, so let's use this formula and do some of these examples. Okay, So suppose Michael makes 90% of his free throws. If he shoots 20 free throws that are independent, what is the probability that he makes all 20? Now, we could just use the multiplication principle for this one, but let's use our binomial experiment situation or uh, formula. This is a binomial experiment because the probability is... Um, uh, there is, sorry, there is a clear success or failure. Either he makes it or he doesn't. That's success or failure. Um, the probability on each shot is 90%. So that doesn't change for every shot. And then the, the uh, free throws are independent of each other. Okay, So all three of those bullet points are satisfied. What I like to do first is list out all of our um, possible, or all the variables that we need. So first of all, the number of trials is 20. That's n. The number of successes k is 20. And the probability on each trial, on each shot, is um, 0.9. Okay. So we'll take all of that and we'll drop it into the formula. So we can write this. The probability of 20 successes, that will be equal to 20, choose 20, times 0.9 raised to the 20, times 1 minus 0.9 raised to the 20 minus 20. All right, and you can put that all into your calculator, right? Remember the combination notation is under math PRB. All right, you can put all that in your calculator and you get that the probability of 20 successes or him making all 20 free throws is 0.122. So about a 12% chance of him making 20 of 20, all right? Now, if you try this, this is a lot to type in your calculator over and over again, all right? So your calculator actually has a, um, program in it to run a binomial experiment um, without typing in um, all of that stuff into the calculator. Let's do that on the next example. Exactly 18 successes. So here, n is 20, k is 18, that's the number of successes, and then p is 0.9. So in your calculator, what you can do is you can use a command called binomial P D F. All right. When you do binomial PDF, what you type in is N, then comma P, and then comma K. So for our example, we'll go binomial PDF. N is 20, P is 0.9, and K is 18. All right, so to do this, we are going to hit second and then the VARS key, okay? Second and then the VARS key. And that will bring up our menu here. And we will arrow down to binomial PDF. We're going to go 20, comma, 0.9, comma, 18. And we'll kick out the probability of 18 successes. It's 28.5% chance. Okay, so this is going to be P of 18 is how we'd write this. That's going to be equal to um, 0.285. Okay. 
All right, probability of at least 18. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. Okay, so probability of at least 18. Here we got, uh, we have n equals 20. We have k being greater than or equal to 18. We have p equal to 0.9. And so what this means is that at least 18, we want to find probability of 18 successes, 18 makes plus the probability of 19 makes, plus the probability of 20 makes, okay? So a really easy way to do this in your calculator, actually, I'm just gonna show you one way because this is really pretty straightforward. What I'm gonna do is plug in into y equals, make sure my plot is off, I'm gonna plug in binomial PDF, okay? So second bar is key, binomial PDF, and then I'm gonna type in 20 trials, probability of 0.9, and then I'm going to put x in there, all right? Now, what this will do is in the table, it will compute all the um, probabilities from 0 to 20. So I'll show you what I mean. So if we go to the table and we start it at 0, here's the probability that 0 free throws are made. Here's a probability that one free throw is made, two, three, four, and so on. You can see it's really unlikely that he makes these uh, such so few free throws because there's a 90% chance that he makes one. Okay, so if we go up to the numbers we want here, 18, 19, and 20, to figure out the probabilities, what we'll do is add up probability of 18, probability of 19, probability of 20. Just add up those three numbers, okay? And so if you do that, you get the probability of x being greater than or equal to 18 is going to be 0.677. Now let's jump over to the expected value for binomial distribution. This is also, again, like I said, expected value or mean, and we denote this by mu, just like I said on the first page of notes, that mu is going to be um, what we use to represent the average value, or excuse me, the expected value. All right, now, if we have a binomial experiment, all right, or a binomial random variable, if we have that going on, then the expected value is very straightforward. It is just the number of trials times the probability. Okay, so let's look at Michael's free throws here and figure out what the mean is or the expected value. Okay, that is going to be the number of trials, 20, times the probability on each trial. That's 0.9. Okay, so the average number of makes that we would expect is... 18 over the long term, all right, which hopefully makes sense. Michael makes 90% of his free throws, so he's probably going to make roughly 9 out of 10. So out of 20, on average, he'll make 18 out of 20, okay? So again, if it's a binomial random variable, finding the expected value is just as simple as taking 20 times point, uh, sorry, it's just as simple as taking the number of trials times the probability of each trial, okay? So let's apply that to this example here of the chimp. A chimp has shown a 100 question multiple choice test in organic chemistry. Five options um, are going to be selected randomly by the chimp. We're going to assume that the chimp knows nothing about organic chemistry. He sees the question on the um, computer screen and then picks randomly A, B, C, D, or E. All right. We want to know what the expected value of the chimp's uh, score is going to be. So in other words, what's the average score going to be for the chimp? Now you can probably guess this. Um, but let's, let's see if our formula works here. First of all, it is binomial. There is clear success or failure. Either the chimp will get the question right or wrong. The probability of success, P, is 0.2. The number of trials here, that's the number of questions, is going to be 100. Okay, so we can compute mu, the mean, the expected value in this case here, as 0.2 times 100. That's going to be 20. So on average, the chimp will get 20 questions uh, correct. Might be a few more, might be a few less, all right? But on average, it'll be 20, okay? Now, the question is, what is, that we'll answer a little bit later, is what, um, what can we expect the range of values to be that the chimp will uh, score? In other words, is it likely that the chimp will pass, for example? Like, will, will the chimp score over 50? Is that likely or unlikely? Now you might guess that it's pretty unlikely because it's random, but how unlikely? To answer that question, we need to talk about standard deviation. Okay, so standard deviation for a binomial distribution, again, very simple formula because binomial experiments have such consistent behavior. Um, 
So we can figure out the standard deviation just by using this formula where n is the number of trials, p is the probability of success, and q is the probability of failure. So again, that q is 1 minus p. All right. So let's use that on the chimp example here. And so we have this question. If many chimps took the test in organic chemistry, what is the standard deviation of the number of correct answers they would get? Okay, well, we'll compute that with the formula. So sigma, that's lowercase sigma, is equal to the square root of 100 times 0.2 times probability of failure, failure that's 0.8. Okay, and if you punch that into your calculator, you get 4. Okay, so a standard deviation of 4. Well, what does that tell us? Well, remember back in, uh, when we talked very briefly about normal distributions. We can assume this is normal. We're not going to get into y right now. But we can assume it's normal. So the mean would be 20. Okay, And so between one standard deviation to the left and to the right, so that's between a score of 16 and 24, we can ex expect about 68% of the data to be between those values. Okay, So 68% of chimps are going to score between 16 and 24. If we go up, we'll just go to the right here. If we go up to 28, we can expect um, another, uh, it's like 14% um, to be between two or one and two standard deviations away. So it comes out to be roughly this. All right, so this is going to be 48% of chimps are going to score between 20 and 28. And so you can see that 30 is going to be an upper bound for the um, chimp scores. The last thing I want to talk to about today is discrete versus continuous random variables. All right, Up until now, um, we've only talked about discrete random variables. And that means that the values that the random variable can take on have been countable. They've been clear, distinct um, values that they could take on. So for Michael's free throws, the random variable could take on 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Um, for the rolling of the die, die, um, it could be one, two, three, four, five, or six. Okay, this example here is one of discrete uh, random variable where it's the sum of the dice. Okay, so if you roll two six-sided dice, you would take their sums. This is what the probability distribution looks like. Okay, we have probability on the y-axis and x is the the outcomes. The next lesson we're going to talk about when the continuous random variables, or sorry, when the random variables are continuous. So this will be in the next part of the lesson. We'll talk about continuous random variables.